Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Nori Factory. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of a crossover between Japanese and American muscle, which will be the Mustang and the GTR. So we finally got some parts arriving for the Mustang. We've got a full Felpro gasket kit and we've also got the timing, the new timing cover, which obviously we knew the last one had a had a bit of a funny spot in it where the water pump bolted up. So this um, this new cover will go on the front of the Mustang just to cover up that timing chain. It's also got the front crank seal in it and it's also got um, the water pump which bolts on the front. Once we've got this on, we'll be able to um, pretty well start the engine then so we can wrap the headers, get the gearbox in it and we've sort of 90% done on that note. So let's get to it. seal it that's that one there so that will seal it onto this bit and this bit here so then this one must be the one that goes on the other side of this plate go like that nice sharp razor blade and then we'll come down and get it as close as we can to the block So then this should peel up and slide off. Beautiful. It looks like these were Felpro gaskets that were actually in there. It's very similar. It's even got the blue through it. So we probably could have reused that, but it's so hard to get the timing covers off the front, um, as you would have seen. So we don't want to be resealing it if we don't have to. It's weird. The guy that built the engine has used like this clear silicon on everything, almost like bathroom silicon. When you're cleaning out spots for gaskets, make sure you always get in the grooves. So those grooves are there for a reason. It's almost like a little valley for the silicon to go in, so it causes it to seal properly. We don't want to cut it too short. There we go, line underneath, perfect. With your timing cover or any sort of front crank seal, rear crank seal, always press them in with a proper fitting socket or something, which is just, this is basic mechanical knowledge, which I'm sure you guys all know. But just a little trick I do is every sort of important seal that um, we do or replace, order two, it, it doesn't hurt to have one as a spare, but if you damage one putting it in and you've got to get the car going and you don't have one, they're like $4. So, you know, for $8 worth of seals, it's always good to have a spare one. So, and you'll often find you'll be a bit more relaxed about it because you know you've got a second one to stuff up. So if you've got that second one there to, that you know if you break the first one putting it in, nine times out of 10, you'll nail it the first time and just have a spare one. So we've loosened off the sump so we can just sort of drop drop the front down a bit. Might not be much, but it might just relax it enough for us to put that front timing cover on. I'm having trouble getting it down on the sill and back on the key on the olives here or whatever you want to call them. Fuck, what are they called? On the dows. <laughs> Sorry, had a mental blank. So we've got to get the timing cover sort of in the gasket and down on the on the dowels here so to do that the gasket supplied sort of sits in these runners and along here and then we've got to get it down enough to get on these dowels so if we just relax the front of the sump enough to drop it down even just the minutest little bit um, without wrecking the sump seal hopefully that's all we need to do Let's see how it goes That might 
pill. Okay, timing covers back on, or well, the new ones back on, I should say. Um, it's going on really well. Managed to to get the new gasket in place down here. I've just got to do that sump up. I need to do it up soon before the silicon sets. A couple of studs were a little bit hard to get back in, but um, not nothing too bad. So the Felpro gaskets are really good gaskets. So I've got confidence that she won't leak. We can put the water pump back on. Then I can get all the belts on the front, get the exhaust on, hook up the throttle cable. Um, and then do some interior stuff I suppose is we're sort of at the point with the car now where everything's kind of slow and and hard to it doesn't seem like you're making progress but you are I guess it's just really slow so we'll get there one thing at a time but um, I'm really keen to get the the seats in it I think the seats are gonna look really good the two front seats so that'll be next This morning we are back on the Mustang. I worked late into the night last night to get the timing cover back on. Got the power steering system all up and in. I don't have any of the hoses run yet because I've got to take that off to do the headers today, which is what we're gonna to do today. But this side of it here is all done bar two small spaces that I cannot find. I've sat them on the bench somewhere and I can't find them. This is what happens when you've got two builds going on at once. Sometimes you lose things. I'm sure they'll pop up if not we can make some but yeah, it's looking super awesome. I'm pretty pumped on this I'm not gonna film everything on the Mustang build because we're trying to get through it as quick as possible So we can get back to the skyline So if there's anything you want to see let us know in the comments Otherwise, we are sort of just gonna breeze our way through it today. We are exhaust wrapping the headers so we got the custom CES header pipes here which are all, all been fabbed up absolutely amazingly i'm super happy with how they come out they're not stainless steel or anything special but there's a lot of dyno work gone into these headers these headers are suited for this car there's not a lot of room in between there and there as you can see on this side which they they're on so we have to pull those headers off I did ceramic coat them with like this heat paint and I'm not happy with how it come out so we're just going to wipe, it comes off really easy the paint with a bit of brake cleaner or thinners. We're going to get the paint off and wrap them. So I'll go through quickly how I wrap headers. Um, I use this exhaust wrap here, you can get it from any sort of performance shop or online. Soak it in a bucket, so soak it in a bucket of water which for years I didn't know this was something you could do and I'd be itchy for a week. So this saves you immensely. It stops the dust and the scratchiness and it also helps you wrap around those hard torn corners really tightly. So there is a lot of sort of sharp bends with these headers, especially sort of up towards the, the face plate. So we're gonna let them soak for probably 20 minutes and then get straight into it. Once we've got the headers on, we can sort of, um, we're gonna bolt up the gearbox. We haven't got a bell housing yet, but at least we, if we bolt it up, we can put the, we can, sorry, I've got a bell housing. We haven't got a torque converter. So at least if we bolt it up to the bell housing, bolt the bell housing up, get the cross member made. I've got a fab up the cross member. Then we can work out what length um, tail shaft we need and then we can move on to the brake lines. Um, the brake lines are going to be sort of super tricky. I don't, I'm not sure where I'm going to run them yet and we're also going to race up to the skyline and strip it ready for paint. Okay, just sitting in the GTR here, contemplating life <laughs> and just how fragile these things are. So we were just about to remove all the trims to get the, um, well, to get this trim out of the way. So when the guys go, or the glass guys come in, they can just cut the glass out. As soon as I touch this, even just with one finger, that broke straight through. Well, it didn't break, but it, it cracked. So 
I'm probably gonna go and watch a few YouTube videos myself on exactly how to, to get the trims out without breaking them. Because I know these things now are pretty much heritage listed, like you can't get them. Um, and, and if you can get them, you're paying like, you're paying more than a car just for trims these days. We're really lucky with what we've got, so I don't want to break it. Um, the Fish and Drift boys are going hammer and tong in the background there on their on their new liveries. They got a new drift driver, which is pretty cool. So they're doing his um, his drift car up. Guys, to get the rear seat out of these GTRs, um, especially some that haven't been out for years, the way to do it is to use like a big. 22 mil spanner or 24 mil spanner in this case and you go just where the ankles is just just right where your ankles are in the back seat and if you prise it in like this and find what I'm trying to show you is where to poke it just use the spanner to prise up and what you're actually looking for is this bit here. So see that those two two rusty little bits of seal there? You poke the spanner in like that and you just simply prise up and lift up with your other hand and out it comes. GTR life. Okay, next stage is the back seat or the yeah, your backrest, whatever you want to call it. Pretty simple, this one, two 10 mil bolts. So in each corner, just one there, actually on those trimmings. Just slide the seat belt faster gently. And you gotta be careful you don't bust the corners in. Okay, next on the list is we gotta get the door panels off. So this is where you gotta be super, super fragile or super careful because these things are 30 years old. And because it's a performance car, they're made of like a foam composite sort of material. So they, it snaps really easy. So I have to get my mechanic hands and just be super gentle. Um, and they have body clips holding them on. So what you want to do is just carefully slide up in there. You can see one down there. There's one down in there. You carefully pop them off. Don't grab the trim like this and pull back because it'll just crack. So you, you get a screwdriver or a body clip, even, even a small like 10 mil spanner, just in and around there and pop it off. And then you just work your way up to your next one there. There's another one there, just pops off super, super carefully until you find the next one. Um, looks like Brad's got some cool tools here for us. Look at that, arcs and he will deliver. Yeah, beauty. And there's oh, there's yeah, special that's... ones as well. Oh yeah, so that sort of goes. And this one's not so special, but you want to get aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Righto, Brad's favorite tool. Cool, so there's some pretty cool tools there to get the arm. Um, the body clips off that's super awesome so they just go in behind there like that and you just squeeze together and it'll pop off so cheers guys we'll find where the next one is oops shine the light up in please there we go Bye. Holy shit, there's some 30 year old history for you. So all these all these front ones busted off, which look how fragile it is, it, you can see all that. But this is why, like, look at that. They were never designed to last as long as they have done the interior. So I'll talk to Kudos about these, see if we can find something or maybe get them reupholstered. I'm not sure. Um, 
So that's everything, we're all done now. So the glaziers can come in and pop this glass out. So I think he can actually unscrew it by the looks, it's screwed in. So hopefully they can save that glass, save the rear glass, save the front glass, because that is genuine. All the interior that I need to pull out to have it sprayed, or, or the bit that's need spraying um, to remove the windows has been done, thank fuck. I hated doing that, like I thought I was going to break Klim's. Luckily we didn't break anything, the, everything sort of come off really easy. There was probably two of the plastic trimmings that sort of snapped off and I'm over the moon with that. So yeah, I need to order these new seals which I'll get them sorted out and I'll talk to, talk to the guys with Nissan parts tomorrow to get everything else sorted. So we're leaving it in Brad's hands now. He's um... He's doing something pretty cool here. Oh, check it he's, out. Uh, he's managed to put his Skyline spoiler on their um, new drift, new drift team. Oh shit, the 86 bike. Yeah, yeah, the 86 lip. Yep. Uh, but this car is their latest crew. Their latest crew. Um, ben, isn't it? Benny. Yeah, Benny Barnes, yeah, mate. Benny he's Barnes is you. He's a new member of Fish and Drifts. So new member of Fish and Drifts, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So when you become a member of Fish and Drifts, you get your car painted, mate. Yep. And, and uh, you get the the lip. Yeah, They've all got mate. big spoilers. <laughs> so and then these guys have got another cool U, Brad's U, which is going to be a bit of a drift pig as well, I think. Drift missile, yeah, which is pretty cool. School U, yeah, yeah. So there you go, school U for the Gladstone Drift Club. That's that's awesome. So yeah, as for the Mustang for now, I'm just running the fuel lines through. So I'm gonna actually run them as with the same as the wiring loom, gonna run them on the, on the inside of the wheel well so there's nothing actually going through the engine bay. So I've just drilled a couple of holes there. Always use bulkhead um, rubber grommets whenever you go through any sort of bulkhead of, of whatever type. Um, I'm gonna have a Dash 6 fuel filter, which is here somewhere right there so i'm gonna have a uh a dash six fuel filter which will go on the outside up through there and then the fuel lines will just come under run underneath and just go straight onto the mechanical pump just here so i've already got one line hanging there ready to run once the fuel lines are on we can sort out a couple of spaces i need to do for the alternator bracket so i'll lave them up get them sorted that sorts out the alternator the water pump belt's on. We then got to mount the power steering pump, which can be mounted now because the headers are done. So it's all sort of coming together slowly. So we got pretty bad, miserable, rainy sort of weather here at the moment. So I'm gonna get as much done as I can to the old girl. Um, it's getting closer and closer, but it's very painstakingly time consuming things that I'm on at the moment. So just your fuel lines, all your wiring looms, that sort of stuff, it's very slow. Um, the next big job, once those things I've just mentioned are done, will be the brake lines. So I've got a whole coil of stainless steel brake line. I've got a uh, brake line straightener. So I'll go through and run the brake lines now, um, which is definitely a slow process. I'll show you guys how I do that. But that's all for this week, so stay tuned. There'll be more of the Skyline coming up shortly. Hopefully Brad will have um, the bits painted that he needs to paint over the next sort of two or three weeks. We will shoot down and grab the engine and what sort of other bits and pieces that we need to get sorted. And yeah, it's pretty cool. Got a bit of stuff to order from Kudos for the Skyline. One major piece that I am missing for the Mustang is the torque converter. So we've got our we've got our bell housing. We just need to get a torque converter. The gearbox for that is just there. So we're gonna get the torque converter ordered today, I believe. So it should take a week, maybe two weeks to get here. That's the final large piece we need to order for the Mustang. And then hopefully, give or take a few months, it should be all done. Cheers guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. I hope you're enjoying the channel.